Hello again and welcome to the Cognautics channel, your one-stop shop for IT and computer science. This is the second part of the series on green IT. We've covered the backstory that links fossil fuels to global warming and climate change. We now know what sustainability means and how it has many different faces from economic to environmental as well as social development. You now have the bedrock for answering any essay style question on green IT as you understand the green part. We now need to drill down and get into the details of where IT fits into the picture. I'll consider the pathway of green IT policies from scientific evidence all the way through legal frameworks and examine some specific cases of the causes of greenhouse gases from the IT industry and discuss how IT companies need to respond to the challenge of creating a sustainable future. The United Nations hosts regular climate change summits. These summits give nations the opportunity to discuss ways in which they can work together to prevent climate change. A notable outcome was the Paris Climate Change Conference in 2015, which led to an agreement being signed and a framework ratified for countries to work together towards the common goal of reducing global warming and climate change through achieving net zero carbon emissions. We know from the first video that broadly, this means taking no more than you put back in. Let's drill down to look at the UK government's response to climate change and the Climate Change Accord in terms of the framework and guidelines for green IT. In response to the Paris Agreement that was signed in April 2016, the government produced the Greening Digital Services Strategy in 2020. It sets out how the government will work in partnership with industry and other sectors to provide IT and digital services to help meet the UN's sustainable development goals and meet those net zero carbon emissions commitments. This framework was designed to cover government IT, digital services professionals, end users, as well as suppliers and supply chains. The detailed actions affect raw material acquisition, manufacturing, supply chains, app usage, e-waste, recycling and data centers. Manufacturing computers and other electronic devices requires the production of many components and parts, resulting in the depletion of finite resources. I'm thinking raw materials here like iron ore, bauxite, gold, aluminium, magnesium, silicon and zinc. Don't forget that electricity is required in all phases of manufacturing, from constructing the buildings, through heating and lighting them, as well as powering the machines. And if that electricity is generated using fossil fuels, then this too will add to the carbon footprint, in addition to the electricity and chemicals used to extract the materials from the earth in the first place and then process them or refine them to the point they can be used for manufacturing. The way in which these components are brought together in order to complete the manufacturing process may also include practices that are environmentally damaging, such as excessive use of transportation, perhaps because the components are manufactured in geographically distant locations where lower wages lead to lower production costs. It's worth reinforcing the point that all companies work towards a business model that places profit center stage rather than to create an environmentally sustainable model. Moving from one model to the other represents a sea change and means that each and every Every business practice from design through operations and manufacturing needs to be looked at afresh. The Greening Government Report highlights the importance of supply chains and their role in creating an excessive carbon footprint. A supply chain is an amalgamation of all the processes involved in bringing a product from raw materials through manufacturing right to the customer's front door. Historically, this focus has been on saving cost rather than saving the environment. Shipping components in from Asia may be cost effective, but it greatly increases a company's carbon footprint. Another strand for green IT is the way in which we use applications. It's rarely considered as impacting carbon footprint, but once you understand that electricity is required for any action that you carry out using a computer, you can see fairly quickly that even replying to all senders on an email when it isn't necessary will increase your carbon footprint. And while this one action will not be hugely detrimental for the environment, when it's multiplied by hundreds or thousands or millions of users and repeated every day of the year, you can see how this could negatively impact our carbon footprint. Recycling and e-waste, they represent another important pillar in promoting sustainable IT. Manufacturers must consider producing products which are more easily upgradable and have a longer shelf life. Built-in obsolescence 
patterns has become the norm in manufacturing and this leads to an enormous amount of e-waste, much of which ends up on landfill, leading to precious metals being lost forever and noxious chemicals and poisons being released into the watercourse and causing further damage to nature. Companies must also be encouraged to recycle their computers so that they may extend their lifespan be used by others and potentially help breach the digital divide. Finally, it's worth considering the impact of data centers. Don't forget that data centers make up the majority of what we call the internet. That's where everything we access is stored. People tend to think of the cloud as a more cost-effective way to store data because they haven't got to buy the hardware to store their data and files. There are green economies, of course, of using cloud storage. But the point is, these large-scale data centers require a huge amount of energy to both power and cool the endless racks of storage media media, computers and servers. That signifies that individuals and businesses need to be aware of their use of storage and be cognizant of the potential damage that it can cause to the environment to keep files that you don't need. And if this energy for data centers comes from fossil fuels, that again will have a hugely detrimental impact. Renewable clean energy sources will significantly reduce the carbon footprint left by data centers. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be the first to see new content. Bye bye.